Hey guys, it's Kat and I am back today to film my top products of 2019. Uh, this has been one that I've been mulling over for about a month now. Um, I just, I still don't feel like I'm ready to do this. I don't feel like I've analyzed everything in my collection right now. I'm sort of um, moving a lot of my stuff from one room to another room and reorganizing. So um, I know I'm going to miss things out and people in the comments are going to be like, but Kat, what, what about this that you loved? I'd be like, Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So I've got a lot of stuff here. I had I had to bring it all in this tub. Like that's how much stuff I have to talk about today. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's things that I'm missing. But I'm going to try to go through the products through categories. So like primers, base products, blah, blah, blah. And just go through and briefly talk about things that I've been loving this year. Um, these aren't necessarily things that released this year. But these are things that came into my life this year or... Um, I sort of predominantly used this year. So there are a couple of things that I maybe got last year, but I haven't really delved into it until this year. So not everything is new, but these are the things that stand out to me. Now, this is the first time I'm filming in like a week or two. So it feels like this is exciting that I get to film. Um, I will be filming my Project Pan finale and my introduction after this as well. So I'll be wearing the same makeup and clothes in those two videos uh, and that's what's coming up uh, later this week and next week. Also, if you can hear the air conditioner, I'm very sorry. I tried to start this without the air conditioner and I was sweating like a pig. It's a hot day. It is what it is. So let's get into primers. Um, and these aren't new products, but once again, they're new to me this year or I've just been sort of delving into them this year. Uh, the first one I want to talk about, um, I talked about in my, I think, November favorites. So this is one that is fairly new to me. It's fresh in my mind. It's the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. Um, I haven't used heaps of, I use the smallest amount. Um, it's like a really beautiful, uh, like emollient moisturizer primer product. Um, it just makes your skin really plump and moisturized and makeup sits really nicely over it. It's not too greasy, so it works really well on my uh, oily skin. It's summer at the moment. I'm wearing this today. I really enjoy it. So it's a product that's like a cult product and it's the first time I've used it this year and I understand the hype. It's, it's beautiful. A couple of other primers that I just want to mention really quickly is some from Smashbox. So this is the Photo Finish Minimize Pores. So it's one of those sort of silicon primers. It's also a little bit uh, oil controlling. And then there's the Photo Finish Radiance. I like both of these. Um, this one's great. Once again, just in the T-zone to, to sort of fill out pores and to stop some of the oil production. And this is nice for a bit of illumination on the face. So, so primers aren't really my thing and these aren't the most amazing ones in the whole entire world, but I have pulled them out this year um, because in my project pan, I'm trying to work through primers to, you know, minimize my collection. And these stand out as being ones that I have been enjoying using. All right, onto foundation. And I do have quite a few to mention and they're sort of split in two categories. Now the first category is sort of like high coverage, long wear foundation. And I know that's not for everyone, but for me, um, I do have a lot of redness in my face. So I do like coverage. Otherwise I look really blodgy and I sort of look like I'm unwell. So I do like a bit of coverage and because I often wear makeup, for a long period of time, especially on filming days or if I'm going out or whatever it might be. I do like um, products that can wear really well on my oily skin. So um, the one that comes to mind as being my absolute favorite of the year is what I'm wearing today and it's by Smashbox. There we go. Um, this is a Studio Skin Full Coverage 24 Hour Foundation. I have to mix two shades to get my shade, which is a bit annoying. This is what I'm wearing today. So I've got 1.15 and 2.15. Um, and I find that combination um, will sort of keep me going throughout the year. I can mix them when I need to. I can wear the darker one. I'm a little bit more tanned. The lighter one when I'm a little bit less tanned. Um, but I, the thing that's annoying about the shade range, even though it's quite extensive, is that the undertones are a bit weird and you might have to mix and match. But I really love this. Once again, it's not going to be for everyone. I sort of see this as being... Um, on the level of Estee Lauder Double Wear, but Double Wear on me looks very, very cakey, looks like a mask and it breaks me out. So if you're that kind of person that likes the sort of claims of Double Wear, like full coverage, long lasting, you might want to try this one because I found this one to be a lot better. One of my favorite foundations of all time. And also what's great about it is that on days where I don't want as much coverage, I just mix it with like a BB cream. You can even mix it with a moisturizer just to sort of tone it down um, or to even add more coverage to lower coverage foundations, if that makes sense. So 
it's a great one to mix as well. Definitely my favorite foundation of the year. In that same category, so high coverage, sort of long wear, I wanted to mention the Hourglass Vanish Foundations. These came out earlier this year. Um, and this was sort of like my favorite sort of filming foundation before um, the Smashbox one came into my life. Um, so this one is a little bit more finicky. So what I mean by that is the way they, they describe how to apply it, which is pretty much half a pump or one pump and then you buff it in with a brush. It is mandatory that you do that because if you use something like a sponge, this is gonna look a bit cakey. It can cling to weird patches, look a little bit uneven. I really think this one needs to be buffed in, but it is a beautiful foundation. Um, this one as well, um, I've heard that people with oily skin like it a lot better than people with like normal or dry skin. Whereas the good thing about the Smashbox one, it does have hydrating properties, so you can use it uh, normal skin if you've got slightly drier skin, but you like a matte sort of long wear finish. Uh, high coverage i still think you can make this work so this one's a little bit more finicky but i still think it is a good foundation um and yeah doesn't meet smashbox but it was my favorite filming one before smashbox for more daily wear stuff so um foundations that i will just wear when i'm going for a coffee or going to the shops or just doing stuff around the house. Um, I really like, there's three that I really like this year. The first one is the Revlon Candid Foundation, so the Photo Ready Candid Foundation. This one is just really nice. I've heard that people with all different skin types love this and I really enjoyed this. I think it gives a nice um, amount of coverage. It lasts really well on the skin, even if you've got oily skin. Um, and it also gives a bit of, um, I want to say dewiness without the oiliness, if that makes sense. So if you do prefer a slightly dewier finish, this will give you a really beautiful finish. If you don't like the dewy finish, you can powder it down. Um, but it's just a really nice foundation. Historically, I really love Revlon foundations, which is why I wanted to try this. And um, it didn't disappoint me. So I really like, I really like this. The next one that I really liked as well, and I sort of tried this when I was trying to minimize some skin sort of irritation issues, um, La roche Se. So this is the Tolerane Corrective Liquid Foundation. It's allergy tested, so it's for sensitive skin. Um, and I just really like this because it's just a standard foundation that works. There's a nice amount of coverage. Um, it's not irritating to the skin. Um, and I just find this to be really comfortable and like it just, it just works. It's not like the longest wearing foundation. It's not like the highest coverage foundation. It's sort of like one of those middle grounds, wears really well, makes the skin look nice without too much coverage. And um, I like that it's for sensitive skin as well. Now, the last one is a little bit different. Um, and I swear to God, I would have hit pan on this and used it up if it was in my correct shade. Um, but this is by Benefit and it's a Hello Happy Velvet Powder Foundation. Now this is a shade two, which is too light for me. If I had it in three or four, once again, I would have used it up, but I've used a lot of it. Um, this is a really, really great powder foundation. They brought this out alongside a liquid version and I didn't like that one as much, but this was really, really good. Um, it gives a nice amount of coverage um, and it's really easy to buff on. Since trying this and really liking it, um, I actually wanted to try Bare Minerals powder foundation because they're really well known for their sort of mineral powder foundation. And I have to say, I much prefer this. The mineral powder foundation, even though the color I picked is a bit better for me, um, I find that it almost grips to the skin and takes a lot to buff in and can look really patchy. Whereas this is just like a powder, but it adds a nice amount of coverage and it does last pretty well. Um, you know, you might want to put a little bit of concealer around your nose or under your eyes, but this is one of those really quick five minute makeup products. So for me, if I just want to chuck on a little bit of makeup um, in five minutes, this is the sort of product I go for. Again, I would have used it a lot more if it was in my shade, but I just, I'm pretty much wear this and then bronze over the top so I can make it work. But I really do like it as a powder foundation. It works a treat. All right, onto powders. And this year I haven't actually bought many new powders because um, I've got a drawer of them, so I'm sort of slowly trying to go through them. One I was actually sent in PR was from Nakia Joy Cosmetics, and this is a beautiful product. So this is the Velvet Finishing Powder, and it is a really, really, really finely milled, really flawless looking loose powder. Um, it does mattify, so if you have um, oily skin, it's a really, really beautiful one. Smells like vanilla, it's gorgeous. So this is probably my favorite powder I've tried this year. Um, I'm sort of squirreling it away because I'm trying to use the powders that I don't love first, um, but definitely a solid powder, a nice luxury 
grade beautiful powder enjoy when it comes to finishing sprays um, this year once again I've been using quite a lot of them in my project pan so I'll always have one that I'm sort of targeting um, but there are a couple that stood out as being ones that I really enjoy using um, when I'm not using the ones in my project pan so I'm almost trying to exclusively use my project pan ones but occasionally I want to reach for another one um, and two that I really enjoyed were these ones here so one is from fourth ray beauty this is a glisten up mist it's got vitamin c in it I'm pretty sure and it's got this sort of like a bit of uh, gold iridescence to it but it's enough that Look, I think it's more of an effect in the bottle. I don't actually think the iridescence goes on the face. Um, the MAC, uh, like, pink light and gold light one, they left little speckles of um, sparkle on your face, which was not nice. This one doesn't do it, but this is really beautiful because it's very um, citrusy and... Hang on. So it's just a really, really refreshing mist. So of course you can use it on top of your makeup to settle down some of the powder. It's not a micro mister, but it's a nice even spray. Um, but what I do love about this is just feels really, really, really refreshing. So on hot days, or if you feel a bit like muggy or you want your makeup just to feel a bit refreshed, this is a really nice one to use, really affordable too. And then the other one that I really enjoy, um, and I do like this range in general, um, the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. Um, I'm using the green one in my project pan at the moment, but um, I wanted to mention one that came out this year. This was from the Hood Witch Collection, and it's a Love Ritual. Um, and this scent is Jasmine and Rose, but it's really beautiful. This is a much finer mist. Um, it's a beautiful scent. I usually don't like floral scents, but this one's really, really refreshing. And what I like about it being a primer water is that you can use it under your base. You can use it um, over the top. You can use it to refresh. Um, and I haven't used too much of it because I've been uh, trying to use the green one up first. But yeah, really, really beautiful. Oops, I forgot concealers. So I'm doing concealers out of order. Um, the only new one I tried this year that I really do enjoy. I have tried a few and they've just been like, yeah, they're all right. Um, but I really do enjoy this one by Shiseido. So um, I'll need to put the name in the description box because uh, it doesn't have it on the thing. Uh -huh, this is the Synchro Skin Re Self Refreshing Concealer. Um, and I just really like this concealer. It's a bit of an expensive one because it's Shiseido. It came out with a powder. It came out with a foundation um, and a few other products. I didn't actually like those. But I really like this. It's a solid foundation. It just works really well. Um, it doesn't clash with foundations. I find I've got a lot of uh, concealers that seem like they're nice consistency and they set nicely and whatever. But when you actually put them on top of a concealer or set them with a powder, sometimes they sort of like crease and ball up and do weird things that just don't mesh really well whereas this one is a really nice one so that's probably the only one i've tried this year that i've really liked um, i have tried a few other ones like from flower beauty and a few other brands ColourPop, and they just haven't been great one that i have sort of rediscovered this year i've used probably 10 of these in the past i've actually got two of them open at the moment maybelline fit me concealer this one is looks <laughs> absolutely disgusting um, but this one is one that I've been using for probably about a decade now or close to not quite um, but I love it heaps and um, if a concealer doesn't meet this it's not good enough in my books and this one does meet it I would still recommend this one over it because it's a lot cheaper um, but yeah probably my most used concealers all right onto face color products and once again this year I've been trying to use up what I've got so I really haven't uh, I've added no blushes to my collection um, and I've only added maybe one or two bronzers so um, I'm going to talk about one that sort of reminds me a little bit of the Bobbi Brown face base thing um, where it's a it's sort of a cult product that I I've known about for years and years and years but I've just never tried um, and the bronzer I'm talking about is the Chanel this is a Soleil Tan De Chanel Bronze Universal um, and this is a sort of bronzing mousse product now it's it's scented, but I really like it. If you don't like fragrance things, you won't like this. Uh, it doesn't irritate my skin. And I just think it adds like an enjoyment level to it, which that's what fragrance is for. It's not there to make things better, um, but it makes the experience better in my opinion. So this is a mousse and it comes in one shade and it's sort of 
designed mainly I think to put under your foundation to add a bit of tan to your skin um, but you can also use it on top of your foundation to sort of bronze a little bit it is quite um, sort of yellow so it's better for me in the warmer months but what I really like about it is it's a mousse to powder so it blends really really nicely it sits over makeup really nicely it gives a nice uh, soft amount of color and um, it does sit well on my oily skin. I find having um, sort of oily skin and wearing quite um, set foundations, often cream products lift your foundation. If I use this before I um, powder, it works really, really nicely over the foundations I use. So um, even though it's not like a holy grail product, in my opinion, um, it is a nice product and it is a bit of a luxurious kind of splurge. So um, yeah, it's the first time I tried this this year and I understand why people really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, it's not something I reach for all the time, but it's something that I thought it's the only thing that fits the bronzer category that I can talk about and um, I do enjoy it. Again, I've uh, tried no new blushes this year, so I can't mention any, but I have tried a few new highlighters and there's two formulas that I particularly love and I want to mention them. So um, in this NARS palette, so this is the Atomic Blonde palette, um, I discovered a highlighter that I'm obsessed with. So this is the palette here. It's got a bronzer, which is what I'm wearing today. It's quite red tone, so it's a little bit too red tone for me. I think it's in the shade Last Call. Um, it's got some eyeshadows at the top, but this highlighter is divine. So this highlighter is called Unleashed. Sorry, the highlighter is in Last Call and the bronzer is in the shade Unleashed. So this highlighter is what I'm wearing today and I am obsessed with it. Um, it just goes on super smoothly. It's the right tone for me. So it's a very, very light gold. Um, if anything's too silver, like too white or too pink, it looks almost um, unnatural on me. But if anything's too yellow, it looks, yeah, gold on me. So this is the most beautiful tone. It's like a peachy sort of soft gold. And it just gives that wet look, which I love. So I do like highlighters. I think they can make your skin look really healthy and really glowy and really beautiful. But I'm not about that really stripe really bold highlighter look. I like something a little bit more glowy and diffused. And this is by far my favorite highlighter I've tried this year because I love that so much. I ended up going back and trying um, some of their reformulated highlighters. Well, I tried one and this is in Fort de France, which is the closest one I could find um, in the permanent collection because Last Call is not a permanent product. And I don't like this one as much as Last Call, but it gives you that sort of similar effect. I just think it doesn't look as wet on the skin. It looks a little bit, it can on some days, if I've got like drier skin, it can. I feel like it sort of emphasizes texture a little bit more than the one in the palette, but it is still that beautiful, soft champagne, warm toned glow, which is really beautiful. So they're very, very similar. Uh, this is probably better for summer because it's a little bit more, like it's a little bit deeper. This has more of a neutral sort of slightly cool tone shift that I can wear all year round. But um, yeah, I love them both. They're my new favorite sort of highlighter formula, um, but I prefer this one. I have seen some people say that they didn't like this formula because it's sealed up on them. Mine hasn't, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I love it, it's beautiful. My second favorite highlighter formula is actually from Jouer. So once again, these aren't new to 2019. I think these came out in 2000 and maybe 18. Um, so did the NARS ones, but I've got two here and I really, really like them. So they came to Australia um, being stocked in Mecca. I was sent Citrine. I liked it so much I went back and bought Rose Gold. So Citrine, once again, is that same sort of color that I really like. It's that really soft gold that gives a glow to the skin without adding too much frostiness. Um, this one is really beautiful as well, but I feel like it's a little bit heavier than the NARS one. So it can give you more of an intense look, but it requires a little bit more um, blending to get it to that. So that's Jouer, that's NARS. You can see that just looks like a bit of wetness on the skin, whereas this looks like highlighter. So it does take a bit more buffing to get it to get that wet look, but it is a really beautiful, sort of noticeable, but subtle enough highlighter. All right, I just went to get a makeup wipe so I can um, sort of compare these, but um, pretty much rose gold is uh, a sort of pink base with a gold 
shift to it. So it actually appears more gold in the skin than citrine does. Whereas citrine is more of a sort of champagne gold base, but it almost has a neutral champagne, um, I don't know, shift to it. I don't know. I don't know. It is what it is. They're different. Trust me. So I don't know if you can see the difference there too much, but they can be quite intense if they're built up. But if you buff them out, they give a really, really beautiful wet look to the skin. That's citrine. We can see it's got more of a gold base and more of a champagne sort of shift. So it's a little bit more cool toned. Whereas the one that looks more pink in the pan has a pink base but it looks more gold on the skin. So that's a beautiful one with a bit of a tan. So um, those are my two favorite formulas of highlighter this year. Um, they just sort of go with what I want, which is once again, something that's noticeable, but something that's not too obvious. Like it looks like your skin is glowing. A lot of people have said to me lately, your skin's glowing. I'm like, it's the highlighter, trust me, trust me. All right, so now on to eye products. And I wanted to mention, I haven't actually, tried new eyeshadow base products this year but the ones that i've been using the most when i haven't been using my project pan stuff is actually the nars um tinted smudge proof eyeshadow bases so i've got one here in medium and one in light um, i use them they work a treat so they're sort of even though i think i got them last year um, they are the ones that I like the most this year. Another thing I wanted to mention, which I think is really, really beautiful. It's by Laura Mercier. This is not an eyeshadow base, but you can use it as a base if you wanted to. Um, it is a caviar stick and it's in the shade Rush. So this is beautiful. Um, I was luckily sent this from a beautiful subscriber as a nice gift. And it's this sort of purpley uh, color that shifts blue. It's really beautiful. It's beautiful on the eye, but I find it's best just to put on the inner corner, on, on, on the lower lash line, just for a pop of sort of duochrome. And it just adds something gorgeous to a look. So this is a really fun way, really compact way just to amp up a look. So for example, if you're going to work and wearing a boring sort of brown sort of matte eye, but you wanna go out afterwards and have something a little bit more unique, um, pop that on. And especially having like a darker base or like a brown base or, even like this sort of tone, if you pop this over the top, it just really amplifies the look. So very beautiful. All right, now onto eyeshadow palettes. So I don't want to dwell on this too much because I have done a few videos where I've talked about these products time and time again. So the other week I did a video, um, if I could just keep 10 eyeshadow palettes, which ones would I keep? Some of them are here. Um, I also did, I think my top palettes of like the first six months of the year. And a lot of these were here as well. So I just want to, touching these really, really quickly. If I have any reviews of these products, I'll link them in the description box so you can see more information about them. Um, but let's get on to eyeshadow palettes. All right, this will come to no surprise that my favorite eyeshadow formula of the year is by Colored Rain. So I was gifted the Colored Rain Safari Rain palette in PR when it came to Glam Raider. Um, I enjoyed it so much that I literally went back and bought the whole eyeshadow range um, that they pretty much stocked. Um, the only palette I don't own is the Power Palette. I was thinking of getting it while it was on sale, um, but I sort of thought I've got a lot of purples, so I don't need it, but I still want it to complete my collection, so that's really annoying. But this is a Safari Rain Palette. I'm using some of the greens today on my eyes, along with um, some browns from the next palette. But the formula of this is my favorite formula of the year. It applies so nicely and easily. I did this eyeshadow look in literally like, I don't know, a couple of minutes. They don't need fancy primers to stick to the eye. They don't need to be foiled. They don't need to be, you know, babysat. You don't need to tap them with your fingers. They just work so nicely. So I love Colored Rain. My favorite palette out of all the palettes I've tried is the Queen of Hearts. So I'm wearing uh, the two greens from the Safari Rain palette with some of the browns um, from this palette. I use this one, this one, this one, and a little bit of these just to sort of make it a little bit more grungy and brown. So I've got a bit of a grungy green brown look going on. Um, I love this palette. The quality is gorgeous. If you want an eyeshadow formula that packs a punch with pigment, but isn't hard to use, Colored Rain by far is my favorite eyeshadow formula. I've tried some really nice indie eyeshadows this year that have really beautiful colors and finishes, but I almost find that they're very, very delicate and you gotta like babysit them a little bit. Whereas these are just good 
all round. They're not ex super expensive. Um, and I think, yeah, by far they're my favorite eyeshadow formula of the year and probably of my collection. Yeah, at least in the top two or three for sure. Some other palettes that I wanted to mention that I really enjoyed. Uh, once again, no surprise. I really love the Viseart Liaison palette. It's more of a purple palette. It's not one that I reach for every day. It's more of a winter palette for me, but creates some really, really beautiful, cool toned purple looks. I talk more about this in that if I could only keep 10 sort of palettes, um, really like the formula, really like um, the color story. I also really love the Huda um, Nude Obsession Rich palette. Uh, the formula isn't as great as the other two that I just mentioned. Um, you do need to use a glitter glue with these sort of sparkly shades if you want them to stick, but this creates a really, really beautiful, intense, smoky, beautiful, I don't know. I'll show you the, uh, I'll link the review that I did of all three palettes and the looks that I like the most out of all three palettes because there's a light, medium and rich version of this. I did three looks using each palette and um, the looks that I liked the most were from this palette. So every time I've used this, it's created really, really beautiful looks. So even though the quality isn't my favorite, um, it is definitely my favorite sort of smoky, bold eye look palette that I own. I wanted to give a few honorable mentions. So I really wanted to talk about the Orb of Light palette from Black Moon Cosmetics. Um, this is a actually really, really, really beautiful formula of eyeshadow. Um, the only thing that stops me from using this on a daily basis is because it is that it leans very, very dark. So if you pretty much just look at those shades, you're like, okay, yep, you can get some lighter looks with it. Um, but anything from sort of there onwards, it's a very, very dark palette. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Black Moon Cosmetics is more of an alternative sort of gothic targeted brand. So this works like this makes a lot of sense. But I was really blown away with the formula of these mattes. Um, they're very, very, very pigmented, but also very blendable. Um, you know, the smallest amount you need to pick up to get pigmentation on the eye. But once you get it on there, you don't have to worry about it like sticking and not being able to move. It's just a really, really beautiful formula. I heard so many great things about Melt Cosmetics and I have tried quite a lot of Melt Cosmetics eyeshadows, um, but I heard that like they're the best eyeshadows ever. And I was sort of expecting more. I was expecting what I got from this, from what I've heard about Melt, if that makes sense. So the reputation that Melt has, I think Black Moon Cosmetics deserves that reputation because their formulas are insane. The only thing I would love to see them do is a little bit, be a little bit more creative with the color stories. So if they brought out a grunge palette with like those sort of grungy colors, that would be amazing. If they brought out like a blood red palette with some like purples and reds and whatever, that would be absolutely amazing. And that'd still be on sort of brand for the, or like, yeah, still on brand for what they sort of stand for. But I want to see more from them because their formula is amazing. It's just that I think their sort of color stories don't work perfectly for me. But yeah, I really respect this palette and I really respect the brand. Another brand that I wanted to give honorable mention to, um, and I thought I should mention this because I feel like a lot of people will expect me to mention it. And I have seen a lot of people's favorites videos, like other channels, and they mention these. And I just wanted to mention why they're not favorites, but they're sort of, I don't know, honorable mentions. It's Kaleidos Makeup and they brought out their Futurism palettes this year. I was sent all of them. I was very lucky and I do really like the palettes and I'm really inspired by, or I'm really interested to see where the brand is going next. Um, the only reason why I'm not mentioning these in my favorites is because I do like the quality overall. I feel like each shade and each palette, there's like variation. Um, some like some work really well. This Futurism green one, I didn't love. Um, I found the colors to be very, um, they would skip on my eyes a lot. The glitters were, or the shimmers were really overbearing that you couldn't actually put sh uh, mattes on top of them. And I found them to be a little bit too muted compared to um, like the Gemini palette. So that was probably my least favorite, but they have brought out some like really beautiful color combinations and the bright colors do work really nicely on the eye, which is great to see. I particularly like the Astro Pink because I love these mauve colors and this purple and this sort of duochrome blue. I think they're really, really pretty. But the reason these aren't making it into favorites favorites is because they're not colors I reach for on a daily basis. So even though I do enjoy using them and the looks I've created I do enjoy. 
I don't reach for these on a daily basis. Um, so for me, they're honorable mentions, they're not favorites. Another thing that came into my collection only recently, it was actually a Christmas present from a subscriber, so thank you very much, um, is from Menagerie Cosmetics. So this is just an empty palette, which is great. And then I've got six shades that were in the, was it the Violet Ink? Uh, anyway, I'll put it on the screen, but I got the six shades. These are really beautiful and I really love it that I got it in an empty palette because it means I can fill this up with some other shades, but these are really, really nice quality. I've been wearing them a lot mixed with brown. So even though like today I'm wearing brown with a bit of green, uh, in the last couple of weeks, I've been using browns mixed with these. So if you like purples, these are really beautiful. So yeah, those are sort of honorable mentions where they are great products and I really do respect the brands or I respect the color stories or I respect the formula. It's just something that for whatever reason, I don't reach for every single day. So I thought I'd put them in honorable mentions. I also wanted to mention that um, this year I haven't been sort of on the pulse with a lot of new releases. I have picked up a few in the last couple of weeks with like the sort of Black Friday sales and the Christmas sales. So I do have like, for example, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Jackie Yina palette. I also ordered the Carly Bible one 40% off the other day, which I'm waiting for it to arrive. Uh, I got the Natasha Denona Metropolis and I got the Melt uh, Impulse palette. Uh, I haven't used any of these yet. I'm waiting for um, sort of reviews to delve into them. I do know uh, quite a few people have mentioned these two palettes in particular as some of their favorite palettes of the year. Um, and even though I do have them, I haven't used them this year. So um, they don't make it into this video, but um, yeah, they're, they're, I like them enough to buy them. All right, I quickly wanted to mention some single eyeshadows before I move on because these are definitely my most used single eyeshadows of the year. Um, and these were the reformulated NARS eyeshadows. They reformulated their um, single eyeshadows and duo eyeshadows and whatnot. And you can actually pop them out and change them. So for example, these don't belong together. Um, I got them in singles or other duos and I've just created my own little duos by depotting them. So this is uh, Virgin Gorda and this is Earthshine. And this is just a really beautiful sort of cool toned Shimmery look, look, I've actually got a pretty deep dint in them. Like that's how often I use them. Um, these are just nice as like washes of color all over the lid. If you just want a little bit of sparkle or a little bit of like um, texture to the eye, these are really, really beautiful. I also use this combination a lot. So I do like that basic brown. I sort of blend it out with this color. So this is Fairs and this is Hammermet One, which is from the Hammermet Duo. The re all the ones that don't have like a one or two after them, are all individual. I've just put them in duos. That's just a matte sort of peachy color. That's just a nice brown. I've been loving the quality of them. And when I'm not testing eyeshadow palettes or wearing things from a project pan, I'm generally wearing those. So yeah, I've just been really impressed by um, those shades for some reason. I think NARS, I don't know. I don't think they actually reformulated all of their eyeshadows. I did swatch a few in store and the ones that I've owned in the past, I'm like, they feel very similar but I was very impressed with these and I reach for them a lot. All right, onto eyeliners. And I've got three different uh, sort of ranges of eyeliners here that I wanna talk about. I think last year for me was a year of sort of colored pot liners, uh, colored liquid liners, multi-chrome liners. So I think in my favorites in 2018, I talked a lot about cool colorful liners. And this year I've just been using what I've had, but I've also been for some reason buying a lot of pencil liners. I've gone back to buying boring pencil liners. Um, so all of the three ranges I'm mentioning are pencil liners. Uh, what I might do in the new year is do a breakdown of like my favorite liners because I know a few people have asked me like, what are my favorite colored liners? Do I prefer Inglot? Do I prefer um, JD Glow? Do I prefer um, Suva Beauty? And they all have different reasons why I like each of them. And then there's other reasons why I like pencil liners. So um, yeah, so I might do a dedicated eyeliner video in the new year, but the three uh, new sort of eyeliner ranges that I've been loving this year. Firstly, I wanted to mention these from Marc Jacobs. These are the Eyeliner Ultra Skinny Gel Eye Crayons. I really love these, obviously, because I went back and I bought more shades. So I've got two browns. Um, so a dark brown, which is the shade... So this is a shade Truffled, which is just a dark, dark brown. I've got a Spice shade, which is more of a sort of mid-tone brown. I've got a Wine shade, which is a burgundy sort of red shade there. 
and I've got this sort of steel gray blue color which is Cinderella now they all sort of look quite dark they're super pigmented and very very uh, creamy and very small the tip is very very small now what I want to mention about these is they last really beautifully on the waterline and tight lining which is why I bought them um, they don't work super well on the lash line because they're too creamy they actually sort of like mush um, and they aren't firm enough to create a nice sort of solid line if you know what I mean so these are best I think on waterline on uh, tight lining maybe a little bit on the lower lash line to then blend it out but they are super 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 creamy super pigmented super precise and really really long wearing so I don't know if these are yet dry but I might give them a bit of a rub test they are very very budge proof so they're beautiful so yeah these are sort of some of my favorite waterline uh, pencils if you want a long wearing one that is quite precise and easy to apply it glides on it's beautiful another liner that is expensive but it is beautiful and I really really like it it's by Victoria Beckham Beauty and this is the satin kajal liner in I think it's yeah Bordeaux so this is a wine shade it is beautiful this is a pencil so you can it's got a smudger on one end um, and the pencil on the other end so it's a sharpenable one so you can use it on your waterline you can use it um, on your top lash line you can use it on your a, a bottom lash line and sort of smudge it out this is a lot more versatile uh, it's a lot more expensive but the color is phenomenal um, I do have two wine colors here and they do look quite similar I think this is a lot more flattering on the eye and it's just creamy it glides on it lasts really nicely and it looks beautiful like I said if you just want a bit of burgundy just blended on your lash line just put a little bit of the liner and then use a smudger or use a little brush this is a really really nice pencil it's very very expensive but there's quite a lot of it and um, if you value a good liner it's worth the splurge if you don't want to splurge I do have a drugstore range here that I do really enjoy um, and uh, historically my favorite drugstore eyeliner pencil is the Rimmel Col Kajal scandalized pencils I love them I've been using them since they released which was probably going on 10 years now um, and I have repurchased some of the shades time and time again especially the brown um, but one that I discovered this year that I really like is by Maybelline so these are the tattoo liners so they're the gel pencil liners so I've got a few shades here I've also got an orange but it doesn't really show up super well so I don't like it as much but here I've got um, this purple one which is in the shade Rich Berry so you can see it's sort of same, along the same lines as this guy here it's a little bit more um, purple though so and it's not as smooth and creamy it does apply really nicely on the waterline and it really does last a long time but it's a little bit firmer but it's still that same sort of color story then I've got uh, Deep Teal which I love I often wear these oh, oh so good on the waterline so good on the top lash line if you like a pencil I prefer a gel you can just get more of a precise look we've got striking navy which is another sort of darker blue it's a little bit less teal gorgeous gorgeous and this one's intense green so often I will wear these on my waterline um, just add a little bit of color to the look and once again you can sort of just put them on your lower lash line and blend them out um, and they last really well look at the pigmentation so Maybelline's done a really great job these aren't as creamy and as sort of smooth as these higher end ones but you get a really nice effect and a nice color on the eye I was also really impressed with the color range like there's even more colors but having like a purple a teal a navy and a beautiful green I was like these are colors that I really enjoy and that really inspire me and they've got basic colors too so yeah this year for me has been the year of the pencil and I have been enjoying it I think it's also because I've been going quite muted on the eyes that I do like wearing a good quality pencil or a little punchy color on the um, sort of lower lash line or the, or the waterline um, but these have been great and we'll do a bit of a rub test these haven't been on for too long so we'll forgive it if they smudge a bit but you can see that they are all really budge proof so even with the makeup wipe and a lot of rubbing the Marc Jacobs ones are the ones that outlast so 
you know, those are really fantastic. All right, on to lip products. And I am a big, big, big lip fanatic. But this year I've been trying to use things that I already have because I did go through my makeup collection earlier in the year. I did a deep clutter of lip products. I organized them a lot better. And so I can actually see, you know, the range that I've got and appreciate what I have. So I have mainly been using products that I've bought in the past. Um, and appreciating what I've already got. So these are products that are new to me this year and I really, really love the formula. And so I'm gonna go through them and I'm sure there's other ones that I've come across, but for some reason they've slipped my mind, but this is most of them. All right, so for liquid lipsticks, I still really, really love the Too Faced uh, Melted Matte Liquid Lipsticks and I've been wearing them, the ones that I like already own. So these don't, I don't think these meet those, but these are very, very close. So firstly, I wanted to mention Jouer. So these are things that I've sort of discovered in the past couple of months and I've been really enjoying them. Um, I do have a dark red one that I don't like. It's sort of dry and a bit flaky, but these nudes are really fantastic. So we've got the shade Terra and we've got the shade Tawny Rose. So these are just really, really nice uh, matte liquid lipsticks, but they're not uncomfortable and they wear really well. They wear off really naturally. So this is uh, Terra and that's Tawny Rose. So that one's a little bit more mauve toned. Um, these, uh, yeah, once again, sort of, they dry down matte and they're long wearing, but they don't make your lips feel suffocated. Like it's got a layer of paint on them or they don't make them feel dry and cracked and annoying. So I really enjoy these. I've been reaching for them a lot. Another brand that brought out liquid lipsticks for the first time this year, it's actually their first makeup release, um, is actually Kesta Black. So I'm wearing the red one today. So this is in Pow Wow, and I've also got the shade Never Nude. So Never Nude is a really, really beautiful brownie tone nude. These are a bit thinner than um, the Jouer ones, but they do last really well. And once again, they're super comfortable. So Pow Wow is this sort of like true red color. It's almost it's a, like it looks true red on me and my skin tone. It looks a little bit more cool toned red, um, but these wear really well. And what's great about these as well, it's like vegan and cruelty free um, and you can get matching nail polishes with this. So for example, let's just reach over here. I've got the matching nail polish to Never Nude. And if you like matching your lip color to your nail color, you can get a perfect match for the lip products, which are really cool. They release six different shades. So those are probably the liquid lipstick formulas that I have been really comfortable with wearing, um, knowing that they're not going to be super like uncomfortable and weird and cakey and heavy. Um, these are things I reach for quite often. A liquid lipstick range that I do want to mention that I only sort of came across fairly recently. And I believe as of next week, which will be the week this is going up, um, they're releasing red ones, which I'm super excited for. Um, but these are actually my favorite products from Kaleidos this year. So everyone raves about their eyeshadow palettes, which I do respect and I do like, um, and they brought out highlighters as well. But I particularly like their um, lip tonic liquid lipsticks. So these are a little bit different to your standard liquid lipstick because these are more of your blotted lip sort of finish, which are really, really beautiful. So there's three shades and they're all sort of nude-ish, but they're just different variations of nude. So we've got injection, immersion and infusion, and they're really, really beautiful. So I'll just swatch them so we can see. All right. So we've got the shades that I mentioned down there. So we've got more of an orangey, more of a mauvey and more of a pinky nude. And what you can probably see with these is that they aren't opaque. So whereas the top ones are completely opaque, these ones aren't. They, they look on the lips like a blotted matte, um, which is really, really flattering, really beautiful, really fresh, really sort of young, really lightweight and comfortable. These don't wear like a super, super long period of time. Um, but they're really easy to uh, reapply. And also what I find is they fade down so naturally that it almost looks like you just have really nice lips all the time. So these do go to a matte, but these are quite wet and quite thin. So you can see that they are quite thin, but on the lips, they're just so, so beautiful and flattering. It's just a different sort of vibe to what's going on up here. If you don't want something too bold, you can have this sort of sheerer version that just gives it... Yeah, it's, it's definitely aimed for more of the Asian market, which is more about the blotted lips. But I think these are done so well. And like I said, they're bringing out, um, I think, red ones that are a little bit more pigmented. But I think, yeah, I just think it's a really nice, softer alternative to that bold liquid lip. So you get that matte finish and that sort of 
velvety effect without it being a really bold color on the lips which I think is really refreshing and I really I dig these it's probably my favorite things that they've released from their range this year for lipstick formulas um, the two that I've tried this year once again I've just been using sort of what I've got but two that I've tried this year that I've really liked firstly um, there's the bare minerals bare pro um, so this is the full size I've used up a mini size um, and I got a duo pack uh, in the Christmas releases with petal and I think it was blackberry something like that I don't love that one as much because I find that this lipstick the key to it is to apply a thin layer otherwise it can feel a little bit heavy so it is a matte lipstick and it is sort of this beautiful sort of blush mauve nude color it wears really really well on me it really is beautiful and complementary to my skin tone um, and it does wear a long time but if you build it up too much you can feel a little bit heavy which is why the sort of blackberry color that I got in the duo pack I don't love it as much because to get the bold color you need to build it up and it feels a little bit heavy but if you sort of blot it down it's a really nice um, sort of color but this one is beautiful I always keep this in my handbag because I feel like it's a type of lip product that when you put it on it almost shapes your lips and makes your lips look a lot more full um, and it just gives a really beautiful effect on the lips. So I really like this particular shade. I do want to try more of their nudes in this formula because it is matte, but it's sort of comfortable um, and long wearing. But like I said, just don't build it up too much. But um, I really dig this. For more of a creamy nude, I really like the Natasha Denona. This is the I Need a Nude range. So she brought out a range of different nudes with different undertones. And what I really like about it is that she's brought out really unique nudes. This is the shade Noah. Um, and you can see how different this is to some of the ones I have on my hand already. So it's definitely more of a brown tone nude. So yeah, this is more of a creamy formula. So it doesn't last as long as this one here or any of the matte ones. Um, but it's just a really beautiful effect on the lips. And um, I really love the color range of it. So if you want more unique nudes so if you like the more brownie tone nudes the more coffee tone nudes the more sort of like sort of sandy colored nudes you can find them in this range um and they're they're very nice so this year for me i have been delving into lip glosses quite a lot um i do like the effect of either putting on a nude lipstick or a lip liner and then wearing a nude lip gloss so i have been sort of wearing lip gloss a lot more this year than i have in past years and I have been mainly focusing on using up some ColourPop ones, but I have tried some new formulas this year that I really, really like. So the first one I wanted to mention was by Wet n Wild. They've got the Mega Last Liquid Catsuit High Shine Lipsticks. These are really, really beautiful. I like these a lot more than their matte ones. You hear a lot of people rave about their matte um, liquid cat suits. I love these high shine ones. They're beautiful. This is in the shade Petal Poison and it's just such a nice comfortable, should I remove stuff? I don't know. Such a nice comfortable thin not sticky formula and it just gives a really lush beautiful effect on the lips. So it does give some color. This one's more of a mauve sort of color um, but I really want to try more of these because I really like the formula. Um, another formula that came out this year that I really, really like is from ColourPop, the So Juicy formula. I really dig. So the only thing that's annoying about this is it's one of those squeezy applicators, so it's not a doe foot. It's good because you can get all the product out. Um, but these are really nice high shine um, sort of sheer lip glosses. If you like that more really wet look. Uh, there you go the wet look this is really beautiful it makes the lips look really really um plump and pouty and beautiful so for affordable lip glosses with a whole bunch of different shades i really dig these i like the nude ones the most so we have here she's here and roundabout i like the nude ones the most um but i really i really like those and then again kaleidos brought out three lip glosses along with their sort of blotted mattes um, so they brought out two shimmery ones, which aren't my jam, unfortunately, but the one that I really do like is Mesmerize. This is a really beautiful mauve. Uh, I'd love to see more nudes in this range. It's a very, 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 once again, very thin, wet look, non-sticky gloss. Gives you such a high shine. It's ridiculous and it's a really beautiful color. So um, this one I really dig as well. I just thought I'd mention as well, the winners of the baby wipe test were Joué. So they were the longest wearing ones. So if you are into long wearing, um, this is a pretty dry baby wipe, but Joué outlasted all of them.
All right, before I move on from makeup and I go into some skincare fragrance tools, I did want to mention that my two favorite mascaras that I use this year, I don't currently have, but it was definitely the Hourglass uh, Caution Extreme Mascara. That was a fantastic mascara that I used up. Um, and also the Benefit Roller Lash. I know I'm late to the party with the Roller Lash. It's one that's been out for years, but it's the first time I've used it this year and they were definitely my two favorite mascaras of the year. I just don't have them here to show you. All right, let's move on to tools and uh, let's start with sponges. So there's uh, sponges that I've really loved this year. Two of them are from Nakia Joy Cosmetics. Um, I've just washed these because I've been using them, so uh, they are quite plump. Uh, you can get them individually or you can get them in a duo pack. One's black with that sort of um, cut edge and one's pink just with that sort of overly kind of teardrop shape. So I love these. These are a little bit more expensive than the next ones I'm gonna talk about. But one thing I really love about them, not only are they very, very, very soft and they are very, almost velvet finish. Like they give you a really smooth, beautiful finish. But what I also love about them, especially the black one, is that they wash out really easily. So one problem that a lot of people have with sponges is that they um, stain and they're very hard to get the product out of. Whereas these ones almost just shed the product really, really well. So um, a little bit more expensive than the next ones I'm gonna talk about, but I think they're really, really great. The next ones are from Ella Cosmetics. Last year I talked about their pink ones. They released mint ones, which are not much different. They're slightly different from the pink ones. They're the same shape, but just different sort of, um, slightly different texture. This is a duo pack that I own. Um, I do have a few loose ones, but I thought I'd just show you this. So yeah, something I mentioned last year and it's a different color. It's not that exciting, but these are also very, very, very beautifully soft. And in Australia, I think these are 30 Australian dollars for the two. Um, in Australia, a beauty blender is $30. So you're getting two for one and these are a lot better than a beauty blender. So I love these. I love them as much as the Nikia Joy, but once again, I think the Nikia Joy just wash out a little bit easier. So, all right, onto brushes and, um, I'm not a huge, like I love using brushes and I like good brushes, but because I have such a large brush collection, I rarely buy new brushes, if that makes sense. So the ones that I have tried this year that I do like, um, and I'm gonna mention, I have been sent in PR, um, which is not a problem. I'm talking about them because I like them. But there are some other brush brands that are on my radar because I've heard a lot of people talk about them. Like for example, Refer Brushes, Haley raves about them. A few other channels I watch rave about them. So they are on my wish list to try. But the ones that I've been using predominantly this year, again, Ella Cosmetics released um, a new set. This was to go along with their mint. Um, sort of sponges. So they brought out a mint uh, eye set. You can buy them individually or you can buy them in a pack. Uh, this is not the whole set. Uh, I've got a lot of them dirty. Hang on. You can see that in my dirty cup, are some in there, but they're just really solid cruelty free brushes. Um, and they're like, they're not the cheapest brushes in the world, but they last really well. Ella also recently released a range of brushes with these sort of sparkly handles, um, which look a bit like um, the sparkly handle from It Cosmetics, uh, which was, I think, 2018 brush. Um, but these are really nice. So once again, this is only some of the range that came out, um, but they're really, really nice, synthetic, soft easy to use, well, like, um, well cut brushes. So they're very usable, uh, easy to wash. I've been enjoying them. And another range that I think I got at the end of last year, but I've been using a lot this year. And once again, this is only a fraction of them. Uh, this is very similar to Ella Cosmetics. So if you just prefer the sets from this brand, go for it. Um, but this is actually Quartz Beauty, which is actually Crystal Conti's brand. So she brought out some brush packs, um, some you know, eye brush packs, face brush packs, bigger brush packs. Um, and she's got really, really beautiful, soft uh, synthetic brushes as well. So I've been really enjoying those and they're pretty much, yeah, Ella Cosmetics and um, Quartz Beauty are sort of the brushes I reach for the most. One other thing I wanted to mention from Ella Cosmetics, and this is something that I really enjoy using and I really value, but at the same time, it's something that I, I, I it's hard to recommend and I'll get into that. So this is the double cleansing uh, matte. So on one side, it's got this uh, sort of, uh, sort of foam insert. So you can see it there, it's just like a foam insert and you use it to spot clean your brushes. So for example, if I've got a dirty brush here, which I do have, you can just spot clean it, 
remove most of the eyeshadow and then you can go in with a different color. And that's been super handy because it means I don't need to use as many brushes as I usually do. So uh, in, instead of swapping brushes for each um, sort of color you use, you can just uh, wipe off the product and then, um, you know, use the same brush. So it's been really, really handy. Um, I don't use this side, which is the brush cleaning side. I don't use it. I haven't used it as a brush cleaner at all. I find these a little bit like not worth the hassle and because this is a double you know functioning tool um i think they charge i think it's 40 australian dollars for it which i think is too expensive so i was sent this i use this side a lot so i do use this side a lot so i really value this side um, but i know that people make their own i know you can buy them on ebay or amazon or whatever it is you can get them really cheap so i do recommend these sort of color switch type products um, and if you do, if you are placing an order with Ella Cosmetics and you like the idea of the, the two sided thing or you um, they've got a sale going on, I would recommend picking this up because it's a very handy tool. and I've really liked having it on my desk this year. All right, onto nail products and my favorite nail product I'm actually wearing um, and it's a gel nail polish. It's from C&D. So it's from their shellac range and the color is blue eyeshadow. So I do my own gel nail polish at home. Um, and what I have learned is that there are some gel nail polishes that last really well, but then they're really hard to, to soak off. And then there's other ones that soak off fairly easily, but then you've got your nails like popping off, um, you know, within a week. So this one I love, not only do I love the color of it, like it's my favorite blue nail polish color, but I find that this wears nearly two weeks on me um, and it's fairly easy to remove considering it lasts so long. I do find that maybe after a week I'll need to replace like this nail because it's the one I use the most, um, the pointer nails, but this is a really, really good brand for at home gel nail polish. It's actually for professional use only. I got this at a trade show, so I don't know how easy it is to get, but I really want to get more of them. And this color is great. So this is my favorite gel nail polish by far. When it comes to normal nail polish, I really, really, really love uh, from Kester Black. They brought out some sort of nail care or a few new nail care products this year. And the two that I love the most, there is the Miracle Treatment Base Coat. Uh, which is this one here. It has like a pearlescent sheen to it. So you can wear it on your own. It gives like a nice sort of glossy effect to your nails. Um, or you can wear it under nail polish. And that's what I generally do. So that's my base coat I use. And then this is the top coat. It's the Supersonic Top Coat. Now I haven't used something like Sesh Vite. So I don't know how this compares to it. But it is a fast drying top coat. And I do know that it makes my nail polish last a lot longer than when I use any other top coat. And one thing that's great about Kester Black is once again, they're vegan cruelty free, but they're also five free. So they don't have all those horrible chemicals in them. Um, so yeah, I really like these. And I was sort of, at the start of the year, I went off normal nail polish completely because I just found that they chipped too quickly. But after using this combination, which you can see I've used quite a lot because they're both down to like here and there. Um, I've actually gone back to using some normal nail polishes, which is great. And two that I really love, once again, they're from Kester Black. If I want this sort of effect, but without the gel, I use the shade Kool-Aid, which is one that brought out this year. And then when I'm wearing nude nail polish, I love the one that I mentioned before that matches um, the lipstick. So this is never nude. So I love using those. All right, onto skincare. And um, I don't have many skincare products to talk about because... Um, once again, I sort of have been using one item and then using it to completion and then using something else. So I haven't actually been trying too many skincare products this year, but one thing that I really, really, really do did enjoy this year. And I think I used two bottles of it. It's from Shuramura and I don't currently have it. It was in my empties. I think the last empties. So it's the Antioxy Plus Clarifying Gentle Cleansing Oil in Water. Now, I love their cleansing oils. Shuramira do my favorite cleansing oils of all time. So I really was interested in trying this sort of water product. Um, and I'll have a photo of it on the screen. But essentially what it is, it's like a a makeup removing water with a little bit of oil. So it's a dual phase product. You shake it up, put it, put it on a cotton pad and you can remove your makeup. I actually use this as my morning step to um, cleanse my skin because I sort of, 
since I wear so much makeup during the day, I like to have my shower at night and like double or triple cleanse my makeup off. But in the morning to just uh, wash my skin, I really like using like a micellar water type product, but I actually found this to be a lot more effective and actually more gentle than a micellar water. So I really love that product. I haven't seen it around much, so I don't know if it's something that's not very popular, but I really did enjoy it. The two other skincare products I wanted to quickly mention, um, one product I've really enjoyed from Dermalogica. This is right down to the bottom here. Uh, you can't even probably see it, but it's down uh, down there. So I've used it quite a lot. This is the Age Bright Clearing Se Serum. So because I do have oily skin, I do often get breakouts and um, I also have sort of uh, easily irritated skin. So I don't like using things that are too harsh. Whereas this is a salicylic acid serum. It's just like putting a nice water on your face. It's very gentle and I find it to be uh, quite effective at keeping my skin quite clear. So that's a product that I have been enjoying. They also have a spot treatment in that range. So, um, and what I like about that spot treatment is it's a clear spot treatment. So you can put a little bit on, um, let it sort of dry and then put your makeup over the top, which is great. Whereas prior to that, I liked using like the drying lotion from Mario Badescu, but it's pink and it's like chalky, so you can only really use that at night. So um, yeah, I really like that range from Dermalogica. Um, and the last thing I want to mention, and I haven't been using this too much lately, because once again, I said, like I said, my um, skin gets quite easily irritated, but Glyco brought out a really good um, glycolic um, skin brilliance liquid. So this is a chemical exfoliating product. Um, so it's similar to Alpha H Liquid Gold, which is like a cult product. People talk about that a lot. I like this a lot better. Um, liquid Gold is full of alcohol and it really dries out my skin. And I feel like the benefits um, don't really outweigh the negatives, if that makes sense. So I feel like it's just an expensive product that yes, it exfoliates and makes your skin quite smooth, but at the same time, it um, dries out your skin. Whereas this doesn't do that. This is a big bottle. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but if you do compare it to other sort of um, glycolic sort of liquid products, this is quite cost effective and I really do enjoy it. So I used to use this nightly, but now I've paired it back to like maybe twice a week because my skin does can get quite irritated from strong um, actives. So yeah, this alcohol free toner, I only use it um, a couple of times a week, but it's really, really good at um, sort of chemically exfoliating your skin and keeping your skin quite clear and bright um, without having to like scrub your skin too much. So it's a really, it's a good product. All right. My body product that I love the most this year was a recent um, release and it's from Lush and it's from their holiday collection. It's the Yog Nog shower gel. I do love Lush shower gels. Um, I think they have beautiful scents. I think they last a long time. And this is a limited edition scent based on a really popular soap. And it is beautiful. This one I actually haven't opened. I've got a one kilo version in my shower right now. But it is a beautiful, beautiful shower gel. It smells like caramel, like creme brulee or something really beautiful, like a dessert. And it just... Yeah, you need the smallest amount, you use it on a loofah and it lathers really nicely. It smells beautiful, just makes the showering experience really, really lovely. So definitely my favorite body product of the year. Last category is fragrances. And this year I actually only bought one new perfume. I've been really, really good at using up perfumes and whittling down what I currently own. Um, but the one that I bought, and I do enjoy this, it's not my favorite perfume of all, all time, but I bought this um, when I went on holidays earlier in the year. So this is the Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Italian Zest. I really like it. I've only used a small amount of it. Like I said, I've been targeting other um, perfumes to use up, but this is a really nice fresh one and it's like just lemony. So um, I've been sort of waiting for summer, which it's currently summer to use it um, because it is very, very uplifting and fresh. It doesn't last a super long period of time because it's a fresh lemon scent, but it is very beautiful. I have actually bought other perfumes this year. Um, I wanted to mention really quickly, even though this is not a new product and this is my second bottle, um, my favorite fragrance of all time, CK2, which is a unisex fragrance, was discontinued this year. So I actually bought four bottles of it. So <laughs> this is actually my favorite fragrance, um, but it's not a new discovery this year, but I did buy a lot of it this year. Last but not least, my favorite candle of the year by far is from Glass House. This is not a surprise. I love Glass House candles. And they brought out um, this sort of like 
candy sort of fun range with all these sort of metallic jars you can see i've got like a teal one up there and i've got a dark blue one in my study but this is my favorite one this is actually bubblegum burst which is a watermelon lemonade scent now it smells like watermelon hubba bubba if you know what that smells like but it's really like fresh and beautiful and i love it i only burn it occasionally like i'll burn it until like the top is melted down and then I'll blow it out and it just fills my room, my whole house with like just a beautiful scent. So this is by far my favorite candle. I've bought it back up since. Yep, I'm that person. Um, but it is, it is awesome. All right, so that is all of my favorites of 2019. I'm sure there's more that I forgot, so it is what it is. But I'll list everything in the description box if you missed anything. Um, and I'll also put reviews if I've done dedicated reviews on any of these products. Um, I will have a fails coming up maybe in a week or two. I'm not going to film it today. I sort of feel like I need to put everything away, organize everything and have a really good think about um, being able to come up with enough products to fulfill a video because um, at the moment on my list, I think I've only got about three or four items that were sort of fails. Um, most products have been just solid products, good products. Um, there've been a few that have stand have been standing out as being products I use a lot and I really do enjoy, um, but there hasn't been too, too many really big disappointments for me. So um, that video might take a little bit more time to film, um, but I'm gonna take a break now, put away all this stuff have some lunch and come back to do my project pan conclusion. So I will see you in that one. Bye guys.